so teams can often exhibit some dysfunction. This gets pretty sophisticated. We have some very nice exploratory as well as corrective action tools. Uh, when teams aren't performing, there's generally, and you could think of it as your whole organization or you could think of it as a very specific team, uh, there's an absence of trust between members. Uh, there's a fear of conflict that your opinion might be different than somebody else's, so I'm either going to be a bully or I'm going to just shut up. That doesn't help team. Uh, lack of commitment. That's really about not sufficiently engaging somebody in the direction of the company. So that's all of these are for the leader to make sure they're attentive to and then quickly address. Uh, there's an avoidance of accountability, and that's usually because people are what I call putting fingers in the dike, where they're backing other people up. Yeah, trying to fill the holes. Fill the holes. Well, you what know. What's that really their responsibility to fill the holes? Yep. But it's taking time out of something they should be doing. Anytime you yourself as the owner or other people in the organization that you observe or whatever are putting their finger in the dike to make sure that stuff is getting done, even though it's not in their fence line to do, you, I just want you to know, you are totally uh, miscalculating the capacity of your company to perform and the skill sets needed because you got people putting their fingers in the dike. You call me if you want more about how deleterious that can be. And if we haven't uh, articulated the results that we want to get, which is really the goals, okay? Um, critical steps to team building, okay, performance measurement. Uh, there's a lot of sophisticated tools that do this, but we, what I would just really tell you is whether it's a sophisticated chart, which we can share with you. And green um, is always good, but red is always better. Yeah, yeah, that's that. When you get into yellow and red, you know you've got some corrective action discussions that need to be taken, taking place. Um, and, so if you, and if you want the PDF of this, contact Dave. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is all available. If somebody wants actually these slides, you know, call me, 847-456-7457, or call Bruce. Or text me. Or text Bruce. Or, or just DM me. It's easier that way. Is it? I mean, I've, I've DM? Got a, yeah, direct message. Oh. I've got a phone number, <clears throat> which is 847-295-9555, but you're not going to remember that because you're online, so just click a button somewhere and DM me. Okay. So you can get sophisticated with how you want to measure, but here's the, the, the ultimate is you've got to communicate the goals for that individual. And then minimally every month you sit down and you have a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that team member. How are things going? Here's what I'm observing based on the goals that we set for you for 90 days and what needed to be done in the first 30 of that 90 and the second of that, so on. And some of it might be, man, you were kicking butt. You're doing great. Uh, or it's like, you're kicking butt on these two or three things. Do you need some help on that third and fourth item? Okay. Um, the other thing to do in a meeting with your employee about performance and measurement and so on is to find out whether or not they really feel engaged in your company. So a couple of questions that I like to ask is, how is the employee doing relative to the scorecard? That's the discussion I just had with you. <coughs> Got to get rid of that frog. The other one is, how is the employee doing relative to company culture? Are they supporting it? Are they uh, unattentive? Or, and I've seen this happen before, um, just took a client, maybe a 60 days ago through this, um, this particular employee whose name was brought up at three or four times in every coaching session about not pulling his or her weight, not giving it away. And after about three or four meetings that this kept happening, I said, that's it. If this person's name comes up one more time, I'm going to personally go down and terminate that person. So let's make a decision. And the management team, you know, came to the table and said, okay, that person's gone. 
So if they're not supporting the company culture, I call that hijacking. And you can have a couple of discussions with that person to see where they are. Can they correct it? But if not, boom, make the, de- make the decision. Um, the other one that I like to ask periodically, probably not more than you know twice a year, is, is this company the vehicle that you believe can take you to where you want to be at some time in the future? it's like if someone feels Mm dead-ended do you want to work here is it it a chore getting up Monday morning and are you looking for the weekend on Wednesday (laughs) yeah 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 I mean is it a chore on Monday morning it's uh, uh, hey mr. Dave uh, it's a chore on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and Friday what are you talking about and so I go well okay well then it's maybe time to reassess that this may not be the vehicle to take you to where you want to be. And I like this question. I've used this question. And it's an innocent question. Don't feel like you're micromanaging or intruding. You are the owner. You are the boss. If you do it right, you're creating team. And you you can come back and bark at me and say, well, you said if I'm doing it right, well, how do I do it right? Well, come talk. Either one of us. Um, termination, I'll, <laughs> I'll make this quick. It almost sounds interesting. Termination, because the key behind termination is make, it, make the conversation short. Don't get dragged into a long defensive conversation about the why. It's just, you know what, uh, uh, Jason, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just not working out. We don't feel like um, this is the vehicle to take you to where you want to be. And um, so we're just going to separate today. Uh, and that decision can be made in the first month as well as three, four years down the road. Well, yes. So make it short and sweet. Well, not sweet. <laughs> okay, make it short. Um, don't get dragged into long justifications and defenses. Just, just don't. You wouldn't be in that conversation to begin with if you hadn't burdened yourself for months with the decision. I know that. So don't relive it in the last 15 minutes of your conversation with somebody. And then last but not all, or at least, is uh, when you do come to termination, they're, they're out that day. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have to be you, doesn't have to be the boss, but it, but it has to be somebody escorts that person to their place of work. They gather up their stuff. Um, What we don't want is, you know, that terminated employee to say, oh, can I say goodbye to so-and-so? Oh, can I say goodbye to this person or that person? And I'm going, not now. This is not the time to parade through the office and handshakes, hugs, and kisses with people you worked with for a while. So in the reverse, let's say that this the employee decides they they want to leave. Do you want to get them to give you two weeks notice so you can scale down their job and reassign it, or do you want them to say thank you very much, uh, you're you're done for the day? Well, the the, the common response to that, and, and and I know we're taking people over, but you know I can I can easily come back and say, well, it depends. If someone says that they're leaving, um, you know, a two weeks notice is actually common courtesy depending on the job, is actually common courtesy because it gives, depending on the attitude of the employee that's saying they're, they're, they want to leave, but it truly is a judgment call. If someone comes to, if, let's say I'm the manager and says, Dave, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm going on, um, and then I would say, well, you know, are you giving me notice? Are you giving me some time here? Now, if this employee is borderline anyway, I kind of like don't care. But if, if, you know, if they've provided some productivity in their role while there, then I'm going to go, well, what kind of a notice are you giving me? Um, so that during that two weeks... Um, you can reassign projects. I can reassign projects. I can get some... Um, Feedback on what they're working on currently. Some assistance between them and the person that we're going to delegate it to. 
and then immediately I'm starting to look for a replacement. If in fact, here's my one of my fundamentals opinion uh, fundamental opinions about open positions that come as a surprise. Someone comes in and says, I'm leaving the company. And we go, oh no, oh Jason, really? Oh gosh, we're gonna miss you. Well, I'm, I might show those emotions, but at the same time, in the back of my little noggin here, um, I'm going, huh, I always wanted to upgrade that position. And there's a couple of things that I would have looked for in that position that we never really made a part of what we looked for. And so I'm always looking for when I get openings or when clients get openings, all right, well, how would we change it? How would we upgrade it? Right, so anyway, terminations are not fun. Trust me. Well, I don't have for you to trust me because you know. Terminations are not fun. Um, but we're running businesses and we're taking care of peop people's futures. So, uh, you know, we just kind of like got to do what we got to do. Anyway, that's team. <laughs>